Peter Elides with you again. Stock Market Cycles Update for Tuesday, January 14th. Um, it's important to remember the primary purpose of these updates that I've been doing for several months now on a regular basis, I think, going back to September, is to show off, if you will, or demonstrate the projection software that hopefully gets closer and closer to being available to you and being marketed. I can't make you any promises in terms of when that will be ready, but we're hoping that in the next couple of months, something will be close to being marketable. That's why I'm doing these updates. Uh, for no other reason. They're free updates. I'm not charging for them. I've charged for updates throughout my career. And obviously, there is a selfish side of this. I'm doing it to show off the uh, the software, not for any great uh, sacrifices on my part, giving things away or whatever you might say. So let's keep that in mind. And also, there have been some nasty trolls over the past couple of days. Usually the commentary is very favorable, but we've seen some nasty trolls over the past few days, and people are welcome to say whatever they want. But when they say things, stupid things, if you'll excuse the expression, someone said, oh boy, he made a big thing out of 17 days in a row and 18 days in a row for his sign of the bear. How ridiculous is that? Well... That's because he's ignorant of the history of the past hundred years. It's not ridiculous at all. It's a valid requirement based on a hundred years of history. Maybe the gentleman who made that comment uh, has some other history he can show us. But please don't. If you're going to make, if you're going to give criticism, make it constructive and tell me what you think about it in that respect. But don't say stupid things like that because you, the. the you don't know what you're talking about if you say something like that. I've spent my life doing this research. I put my heart and soul into it, and I try to present it to you as honestly as I can. Anyway, enough of the emotional stuff. This is our daily nominal 40-week equivalent projection chart. We showed you this within the past few days. This is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. I think it's going to hit into here. And I think when it does that, that we're going to have some kind of pullback and maybe go further out into the year and come up again. That's my instincts right now. I don't have anything to prove it except for this projection, this closing price projection for the Dow. Now, you know what's interesting that I discovered today? And I'm going to show you this. I'm going to pause for one second so you won't have to wait till I bring that chart up. Okay, this is a very interesting chart. This is the same basic chart with a New York Composite Index on it. This is the December of 18 low. Now remember, these are closing price projections, not intraday. We had the same cross here in March, April that we had in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It became a little more of a situation in here, though, because it indeed looked like that projection was invalidated. You can see very clearly here that on this day, August 23rd, we were below both of the offset lines. Didn't stay there for long. Immediately after this two or three day excursion, below both those offset lines, moved immediately back above. This was the projection that was given back then. A minimum of 14,060.51. Now, the software is trained that if you get below both the offset lines, as we did here, that you you move that from a green projection to a gray one because it's theoretically invalidated. I would claim that this projection is probably still in effect, and that's maybe where the market's trying to reach up to it as on a minimum basis for the New York Composite. So the minimum upside closing price projection is 14060.51. Mind you, we hit yesterday a close of 14,042.65, so very, very close in terms of meeting the lower part of this upside projection, which looks like it's been invalidated. Okay, I wanted to show you that. Another area of discussion, some people say, <clears throat> what good does this software do if I'm a trader? Does it give me information intraday? Let me show you something. Um, these are the 27-minute charts that we use for intraday projections. And this is the S&P futures, daytime only. Globex is not included here. 
Uh, at ES.D is the trade station symbol. That's daytime only S&P futures. So take a look at some of these recent projections. There was a downside projection here. This was for January 10th. The projection window called for a low of 3260.88. Let's round it off 3260.75, the, the nearest uh, tick figure on it. And what was the low? 3260.75. That wasn't too bad, folks. Okay, so that's projection number one. Projection number two a minimum upside of 32.9075 and a maximum of 32.9575 let's call it what was the high 32.95 even not too bad two in a row now this one's interesting and this shows you the real time operation of the software you can see there was a downside projection here again very, very, very close, almost not given because, as you can see, this midpoint almost did not cross below the lower line here. But the computer doesn't care about almost. It did cross below, and so it gave this downside projection. But guess what? If you were waiting for that downside projection to be met, you very quickly invalidated it and gave an, a short-term upside to this little box up here, 3287 to 3291. The high was 3289.75, right smack almost in the middle of the projection window. And right after that was given, a very quick downside projection was given to 32.78 and a quarter, 32.80, let's call it 75. And we've come down to a low of 32.78.75. So if you're wondering how you use this software in terms of intraday trading, this is how you use it. I'm not giving you buy and sell signals. I'm showing you how to work this software and how it works internally in terms of the market. The last chart I'm going to show you is one that suggests, again, that we may be at a top, but probably not an important top, and that's the AD line. You have to go back there. As I said before, there may be one or two instances in history where the daily AD line was making new all-time highs, and the market made an important top while that was happening. It's just almost non-existent. So the fact that the daily AD line went to another new all-time high today it doesn't suggest we can't go down here or even have a sharp decline. What it does suggest very strongly is that if there is a top formed here, it will not be an important one as yet. That's it. That's all I have right now. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe, bottom right. Click on the bell. You'll be notified of all the projections, all the projections, all the updates that we do. Uh, even if we do on intraday, you should be notified immediately. Thanks a lot for watching.